Hi, this is Dr. Ajay Rora and today we'll be talking on TAS. What is it? How it occurs? How to prevent it? How do we differentiate it from endophthalmitis? So all of us would like to have our cases work out well like this, which is a perfect outcome and not a case disaster like this, which is an endothelmitis or an inflamed dyke, which is a TAS. Now, whenever we operate, our post-operative course of the patient, there can be inflammation, and this could be TAS or a sterile post-operative endothelmitis. Endothelmitis as such, acute exacerbation of inflammation in a prior uveitic eye or inflammation caused by surgical trauma. So these inflammatory responses, there is a major difference between endothelmitis and others. In fact, that endothelmitis, there will be infection present which perpetuates and exacerbates the inflammation. Now, all these cases of inflammation have some cardinal signs which are the basics of inflammation which all of us have read in pathology before. So you have rubor, which is redness of the eye. This is because of increased blood flow, congestion and breakdown of the blood retinal barrier. Then you can have calor, which basically indicates a localized increased temperature. Tumor is uh, accumulation of fluid, so you can have corneal edema, you can have vitreous exudation, or you can have a retinal or a macular edema and a lid edema. Dolor is because of stimulation of the nerve endings, that is pain, and functional ease is loss of function, that is usually there is loss of visual function or presence of flutus. Now, in TAS, the inflammatory response is non-infectious substance and it is introduced in the eye during or the immediately end of the surgery. It is a one-time event and not an event in continuity. That is because there are no replicating organisms. It is also not a never event. I can't say that, look, I'm doing such wonderful surgery. My OT is good. I have tried to take all precautions and therefore TAS will not happen. But TAS can occur. We have to be prepared for it. We have to understand it so that we can handle it well. Now, TAS could be because of heat-stable bacterial endotoxins, reusable devices, it could be phaco tips, sleeve, eye probes, simco cannula, either socks or various rings. Then you can have it because of viscoelastic residues because of those cannulas do not get cleaned well. Then contamination of other residues, it could be detergents or ETO gases or tile from the glove or cotton fibers. There can be abnormal ionic concentration in the solutions and this is because you may have changed the source of irrigating fluid and if that happens then it is possible that you may have TAS. It can be because of preservatives or it can be because of post-operative antibodies going into the eye. Then how do we differentiate it clinically? If inflammation occurs within the first 12 to 24 hours, there is no hypopion, I will think in terms of TAS, but if it happens much later on, within the first uh, 3 to 7 days, uh, one could suspect endothelmitis. Then usually the TAS eye is a uh, eye which is much quieter, it won't have lid swelling, while an end of eye will have lid swelling. Then there is pain which is more with endothelmitis, but it is also present in TAS. <coughs> there is corneal edema which is diagnostic, it is uh, present from limbus to limbus. In endothelmitis it may be localized near the wound. The AC reaction will be there, the pupil may be fixed and dilated. The vitreous cavity will be anechoic in TAS, but there will be vitreous echoes in the vitreous cavity. Okay? So,
the patient was treated with steroids alone which was intensive treatment and you can see within 2 weeks the patient responded well so this is another case a patient who had an unusual post op reaction there was good glow patient was treated with intensive steroids and you can see over a period of time patient responded extremely well now comes the situation where we have a hypopion and here we have a patient who has got anti segment inflammation so whenever in doubt you should always err on the side of infection if you have a hypopion there is every good chance that it may be endothelitis now diagnostic is a uh, ultrasound which will show you um, exudates within the vitreous cavity there may be membranes there may be thickening of the choroid and you have to certainly differentiate it from vitreous hemorrhage uveitis or dropped lens matter now how do we treat basically tas needs to be treated with intensive topical steroids mediatic cycloplegics you have to use lubricants non steroidal anti inflammatory close observation of patient at at any suspicion you must treat the patient for endophthalmitis while an end of case this is a standard treatment of topical antibiotics intravitreal antibiotics which are very important use of atropen nsaids topical steroids systemic antibiotics systemic steroids and vitrectomy whenever indicated now as i said earlier the task force uh, outlined the various causative organisms and what practically can be done is you can have a uh, heat stable gram negative endotoxins in the ultrasound bath they need to be periodically cleaned well you should have a protocol in place for cleaning the ultrasound bath the phaco probes and the io probe tips must be washed with 120 ml of Uh, more of a sterile water after use then you should dry them before you go ahead and um, ster- re-sterilize them do not touch the iOS with your gloved finger you should only touch them with instruments and do not reuse viscoelastic cannulas because you may have residues left of viscoelastic within the cannulas it is preferable to use powderless gloves But if you are using uh, gloves with the powder, you can clean them with uh, sterile saline, and you should be very watchful of what products are used intracamerally. Now, once you have diagnosed a patient who has possible endophthalmitis, how should you go about? One is to directly refer to your retina colleague, but then you have alternatives that you can collect the sample yourself, and you should learn how to do that. the sample could be aqueous or vitreous transport it correctly you should know that and then subject it to a gram stain koh stain bacteria and fungal culture and maybe pcr analysis now the samples from the vitreous can be taken by a 26 kg needle it can also be taken by a scalp vein but here the material that comes into the tubing can be then sent for culture and sensitivity during surgery they are taken by a syringe which is attached to one of the ports of uh, the vitrector where the suction tubing is so that initially the suction is made by the syringe so that you can collect the sample now once you got the sample the simplest way is to uh, turn the tip of the needle put it in the eto bag and that can be sent to the lab as soon as possible or if you have an option you could inoculate onto the culture plates at the site of collection which of course is the best way to do it what do you need for processing a sample you need two slides grams and kg you need three solid media which could be blood agar chocolate agar or sebaceous dextrose agar two liquid media and then so this is uh, just a representation of what all you need and then you could also subject the patient's samples for 
PCR analysis, which is a multiplex PCR, or it could be done through an excitor, which is based in Bangalore. So in the end, the take-home message is that TAS is a one-time event and not an event in continuity. That is because there are no replicating organisms. It is an inflammatory response and it is not caused by replicating organisms. Therefore, you should treat it with steroids. Here there is no role of antibiotics at all. Therefore, it's very important for you to diagnose it correctly. It usually occurs because you may have changed your protocols, your processes a little bit. And whenever in doubt, you should err on the side of endothelitis. Intravitreal injections, everybody should know. And I think in my previous, previous video, I had demonstrated how to safely inject various drugs into the vitreous cavity. You must always aim for getting an organismal confirmation in a case of endophthalmitis. So that is essentially the end of my presentation and discussion on TAS versus endophthalmitis. Thank you, but I would like to make a small uh, deviation here. I would like to include a non-academic slide. And uh, me and Dr. Rajesh Sena are standing for elections, Dr. Rajesh for secretary, me for treasurer, and this is a manifesto. You may say that, you know, there are so many manifestos and because you're standing for elections, therefore you're making these promises. But please understand, he is from an institution, RP Center, I am a practicing, uh, we are consultant practicing at different centers. So. My aim would be that as a practitioner, I should protect myself, protect my colleagues, safeguard themselves, so that it's very important that I do things which would be helpful to all the practitioners, which means TPA and IRDA protection, making sure that TPAs pay us adequately and pay us well. And then we should have uh, various things like we should be able to reduce the, the duties on IOLs and microscope. We should uh, make sure that the AMC rates are reasonable and standardized. We should also have a um, periodic training program for uh, practitioners, also training program for their staff for maintenance of instruments. The CGHS, ECHS uh, and Ayushman rates definitely need to be uh, improved. I uh, sometimes I fail to understand why such rates are being given. Especially for retina, the rates are very poor and also for the anti segment surgeries. Both of us have been very active in academics, so we will take that forward. We will try to ensure that AOS reaches higher level in form of skill development for our youngsters. They should have an opportunity to visit centers uh, at the behest of All India Family Society so that they can improve their skills. We are both from Delhi. Dr. Rajesh is from the Apex Center. So I trust and believe that we can take the advocacy of All India Family Society closer to wherever it matters so that we can get work done. So believe me, this is not an electoral manifesto. It is a manifesto coming from our hearts. We are passionate about it and I promise that we'll do it. Thank you very much.